1968, the ethnomycologist R. Gordon Wasson published his now seminal work, Soma, Divine Mushroom of Immortality. In the book, Gordon Wasson makes the case that the Soma of the ancient Rig Vedas, this sacred elixir that had so many health benefits and spiritual benefits, um, and indeed that had many, many, many thousands of verses um, composed in honour of it in the Rig Veda, which is one of the world's oldest spiritual texts, that the best candidate for the identity of the mysterious Soma elixir is the mushroom Amanita muscaria. And he tracks the influence and impact of Amanita muscaria across myriad cultures throughout the ancient and modern world. Really painting a picture that here in this one plant teacher, we have an incredible force of nature that has shaped our world even to go so far as to uh, influence both our Santa Claus story, of course, the red and white uh, portly gentleman with a beard, uh, and all of these are elements that can be traced to the folklore descriptions and tales of Amanita Muscaria, right through to uh, John Mark Allegro's work, um, the name escapes me right now, but essentially, uh, oh, The Mushroom and the Sacred Cross, uh, essentially mapping the life of Jesus onto the life cycle of the Amanita Muscaria. As a child, and by the way, Amanita Muscaria, for those who are not yet familiar um, with this term, is the Latin name for fly agaric which is the red and white spotted toadstool of Lewis Carroll fame and of pretty much every fairy tale image you care to look at. And of course, Super Mario Brothers. And so what we have is this living cultural symbol expressed in a multitude of ways from uh, our most sacred connection to Christmas through to our most sacred connection to video games, through to our most sacred connection to entheogenic plant ceremony and the psychedelic renaissance that is currently unfolding on our planet. And yet you can almost see that Amanita muscaria is the, it's almost like the forgotten master teacher that, um, in the works of folk like Gordon Wasson, we have perhaps forgotten the significance of what they offered, um, falling instead into trite stereotypes of Super Mario cartoonification and um, the kind of like the, the emoji symbol that is essentially, you know, the mushroom um, that we all know and love. And yet we've forgotten the deeper significance perhaps of the fact that this, for many, sacred plant exists in almost every fairy tale depiction on the planet. That degree of cultural memory means something. And so I began there as that as a kid, I was fascinated with the Amanita muscaria mushroom going so far as to purchase books upon books on mushrooms simply in the hope that these books might contain some extra tidbits to allow me to understand more about the historical and cultural significance of Amanita muscaria. Now, I didn't necessarily have the language that that was what I was looking for, but that was what I was trying to understand. I was trying to understand the deep mythos of Amanita muscaria within my, um, you know, childhood frame of reference. And this fascination was reawoken when I came across Norse shamanism and the idea that the Vikings would consume 
Amanita Muscaria before going into their berserker states on the battlefield. And both Gordon Wasson and I and others would challenge this because of the slightly more soporific nature of the Amanita Muscaria experience. With that said, out the other side of the soporific experience does come a very high level of energy activation. So it's not impossible that this could also have been tapped into by the Norse warriors. Um, through to then my own personal experiences, uh, some very powerful um, personal work with the mushroom um, in ways where I was wildly inexperienced and utterly gracefully held by this teacher who took me by the hand, even though I was you know, just messing with forces I had no idea about. And yet clearly there was this through line of connection through to the present day where uh, I've spent the last weekend in a very deep ceremonial container with the mushroom reconnecting with um, its gifts on many, many, many levels. And one of the overriding um, senses I have is that given the extent to which our ancestors had access to this potent technology, and I use those words very deliberately, there is a quality to the teachings of Amanita Muscaria that certainly are spiritual, but certainly are kind of um, natural, technological, crystalline, if you like. And that given that our ancestors we know had access to this, it is no surprise then that we see the existence of a technolithic society that is stone-based technology that we cannot replicate today. Right from the Great Pyramids of Giza through to the stone circles of Avebury and the pyramids of Central America, the pyramids of China. That we do not possess right now the technological skill, nor even, I think, the technological frame of reference to bring such edifices into being. And yet they were. And so what I hope to do in this coffee cast is to invite the opening of a conversation. Not just about Amanita Muscaria specifically, but about the role of plant teachers, psychedelic therapeutics within the context of supporting the greater generation, that is, this incredible emerging demographic of enterprising over 50s who are standing up, standing out and doing their bit, starting businesses, leaving legacies, um, engaging in activism, that there is this incredible upsurge of energy of throwing off of stereotypes and shackles and saying, no, here we are. And to acknowledge that many of these um, particularly the boomers within that, were pioneers in laying the groundwork for our current psychedelic renaissance that is having such profound impact in fields as diverse as drug addiction, treating um, PTSD, treatment-resistant anxiety, end-of-life anxiety, like the, the, the list goes on and on. And for me personally, I know that a personal mission is to be an emissary for the gifts of Amanita Muscaria that uh, I believe are, are urgently needed uh, to come to the party, so to speak. And so if in what I've laid out so far, there is a spark of interest to discover more, to find out more, then I'd like to invite the opening of a conversation. Please simply send me a message uh, and let me know you're interested and I will let you know the next steps which will emerge as I uh, discern how many people are interested in such a conversation. Okay. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.